Hello and welcome to C++ Weekly. I'm your host, Jason Turner. I'm available for code reviews, contracting, and on-site training. Now in this episode, I would like to cover overloading of logical operators. This is our logical and and logical or operators. So I have this code. I have already typed it out here. I'm not going to make you watch me type it today. And for a, perhaps a bit of a twist, I have actually shrunk up all of the disassembly output because that is not relevant to our code today. I also am running a local version of Compiler Explorer that allows me to execute the program, which at the moment the website version does not allow. But I have this very simple struct. It is called S, and when it is constructed, it prints out a statement. And then I've got a value in here. So I've overloaded this operator or, and I, you know what, I'm going to shift this up here. So if we have this or operation, it's just checking to see if the left-hand side is true or the right-hand side is true. So if we were to create a main and create each of these and do this, make s or make s, and the first one is going to be true, and the second one is going to be false. Now, I know that I have covered this in the past on this video, that we like and use Boolean short-circuiting when it makes sense to. So we would expect, in the normal case, that this object being true would cause the second branch to never execute, because it would say, yes, this is true, so there's no reason to call this function. And we can see that with a little bit of extra code. So all we're doing is returning the value that was passed in, but we can trace the function calls that were made. So get bool of true or get bool of false. Now, in this case, we can see that get bool has been called exactly once because it called the first one and said, that is true, I am not going to call the second one. Now, if we do false here, it's going to do the first one and the second one because it has to. And if we put this and in here with a little bit of grouping, it's going to execute the first one, and then it's going to keep trying until it sees if it can, you know, complete this or not. So if I make this true, then we'll get two calls to get bool. If I make this false, because this is an AND operation, then I only get the one call. The first one is false, and the rest of it short circuit. So this is kind of basic short circuiting logic with C++ or any of the Algol family of languages. Now let's go back to our S thing. This thing with the overloaded operator OR, it's utterly impossible for this kind of logic to ever work with it. It is always gus to execute each of the things. It can't do short circuiting. So let's go ahead and add in an ampersand logical ampersand uh, and operation here like this, and put in this, and let's do the exact same thing and see what happens. So I have now done this make s false, and I'm expecting, or would like to expect, that some sort of short-circuiting would happen here, and this code would never execute, just like in the case with the regular Boolean value, but that's impossible. So I get make s called three times, I get four of these values generated, like it's just none of it does exactly what we would expect it to do. So this is why if you're ever reading any book that says never overload logical and or logical or, or the comma operator, yes, the comma operator can be overloaded as well. This is why. It's because with this overloading, it is impossible to get the semantics of the built-in operator. So be aware of that and don't overload your logical operators. Thanks for watching C++ Weekly. Be sure to subscribe.